Ever since I was a child, I've loved the series so much. I started out with Twilight Princess and have been a fan ever since. Earlier this week, I announced that I wouldn't be making one of my regular style videos because I've been very busy lately. So I figured that I still wanted to make a video, but one that'll take less time, so this is what I came up with. So without further ado, let's head into the video. This old title is actually one that I've never finished, sadly enough. It's mainly because at the time my 2DS broke, and more specifically, I broke it. Since the rubber on the circle pad came off and I was trying to fix it by transplanting another 2DS's circle pad, but when I opened them both, the ribbon cable snapped. But then I never figured out how to close them again. It's a sad story. Moving on though, here are my real thoughts on Majora's Mask 3D. It's a good game and I love the themes of death, and it's something that no other Zelda game has ever attempted ever since. And as much as I adore Twilight Princess, its arc atmosphere is a lot different. The masks are also a really cool mechanic, gameplay wise and story wise. Gameplay since you get to physically turn into other races of Hyrule for the very first time, and story wise for the stories in every region, it's just amazing. My favorite story arc was in the East Bay and having to restore Lulu's voice. My only problem at the time came with me being frustrated by the in-game timer. I know that's half the reason why Majora's Mask is so good, but at the same time, it just frustrated me that my progress in a dungeon could be suddenly be erased. And it was even worse when I got stumped, and that's why I hated the East Bay Temple so, so much. And if I ever get the chance, I would love to give this game another try. Then 64 original is on Nintendo Switch Online, but I'd rather play the much improved remaster that improves a lot, even if some people don't like the changes it makes. <laughs> It's probably funny to you to see a spin-off like this on the list, but it's honestly pretty great. Like Majora's Mask 3D, I haven't finished it, and I likely won't for a while. It's because I don't use my Wii and Wii U anymore, and I'm sure as hell that Nintendo ain't porting it anytime soon, which is a shame. Link's crossbow training is a fun light gun shooter that uses Twilight Princess as a base, and it's fucking weird, but hey, I fuck with it. The gameplay is a lot of fun, even though it makes no sense within the canon of Twilight Princess. There are no fucking crossbows in the game, but but who cares? This is a purely gameplay focused game that's just great. There's also not a lot to talk about, like I said, this is a light gun shooter focused only on the gameplay. If anything, I would love to see Nintendo make a modern day sequel to Link's crossbow training, but stick in the world of Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Art style is incredibly unique, going for a diorama style that I wish other games would take. And while the frame rate is weirdly inconsistent in the overworld, I'm fine with that. It's just a really pleasant game to go back to and to look at, especially with the soundtrack. Instead of being limited by Game Boy, it's a lot more unique this time and just amazing. Link's Awakening is just a game filled to the brim with charm in both its original and in the remade version in so many different ways. I've definitely gotten stuck a lot while playing this game, but I love it. I love being stuck in a Zelda game with no idea what to do, which does sound weird. It's something that I appreciate a lot more now since I've played Breath of the Wild, where I only get confused on what to do in a shrine at 3.04pm on a Tuesday. Oracle of Seasons. I love this, and I fucking hate it. Like Link's Awakening, this takes us out of Hyrule, and not just to a deserted island. It's a fully original country, and man, I wish Nintendo would venture out of Hyrule more often. Oracle of Ages takes place in Holodrum, and it's up to Link to save the land from Twin Rova. Like most Zeldas, the story ain't anything special. But what the story lacks, Oracle of Seasons more than makes up for in the gameplay department. Its main gimmick this time is 1. Oracle of Ages is only one half of a bigger picture, and 2. You can change the seasons. Oh my god. Gosh. Oh my gosh, this is cool as hell. You could change the fucking season. The game is great, though I haven't finished it. And why haven't I finished it? Well, let's see why. It's so fucking easy to get lost in the game, I hate it. Age of Calamity? Haha, <laughs> more like frame rate of calamity. Haha. <laughs> Despite its many flaws, like having a frame rate generally so bad, and having a story that could have been great being tainted by fucking stupid time travel, it's a pretty good game. I know it's controversial and that people usually find this type of combat to be too damn bun mashy, but for me, I really love it. I've played Fire Emblem Warriors, this, and Three Hopes, and I only got sick of Three Hopes after like two playthroughs, and at that point, it ain't the combat's fault. It's a fact that it's Fire Emblem. Back to Age of Calamity though, yeah. I love it a lot. Despite being developed primarily by Koei Tecmo's Omega Force, this feels a lot like Breath of the Wild, and that's impressive. It also running on a Switch is impressive. A good impressive? 
not really, but it's impressive nonetheless. I found the combat to be incredibly good, and it even improves on aspects from Breath of the Wild. In that one, there was a big problem with the enemy variety. There was a big problem with the enemy variety, and Age of Calamity makes it a lot better by adding elemental types to enemies. While not a big change at all, it is pretty cool. Though, I will say I was disappointed by the story. Breath of the Wild story was never amazing, but that was because everything happened in the past. The only powerful scene in Breath of the Wild was where Link falls and Zelda finally awakens to her powers. Despite all the potential, Age of Calamity never lives up to that. But hey, at least you can play as an egg. This is a prime example of how to make an amazing 2D Zelda game. Despite taking a lot from A Link to the Past, I find it to be so much better. And admittedly, a good reason why I love A Link Between Worlds is because of nostalgia, but I still think that A Link Between Worlds is amazing. It takes the base of A Link to the Past, but changes it up a lot, and in many ways feels like a precursor to what Breath of the Wild would do. Having access to the main items from the very start is cool, and the non-linear design is awesome. It's an interesting deviation from the usual formula. It feels like this and Skyward Sword were the stepping stones for what Breath of the Wild and now Tears of the Kingdom are doing. I just love how it reinvents the SNES classic with the painting mechanic. Being able to go 2D and go across walls, and also to low rule, it's just a great experience. The dungeons, the story, yeah it's basic. And the art style is all so good, and, and it makes me so sad that we've never seen another 2D original game ever since. Triforce Heroes does not count. Ocarina of Time is a special entry in the series, not only by being the first 3D game in the series, but what it meant for the industry. And you've already likely heard all this before, so I won't bore you by repeating everything again and again. I first experienced Ocarina of Time through the remastered version on the 3DS, but I have played a good amount of the N64 original. And man, it's amazing. Both versions are masterpieces. I remember starting the game, and I knew instantly that this was something special, mainly due to the main theme that plays, which is phenomenal. The main gimmick in Ocarina of Time also enhances the experience. While we don't have a dark world like A Link to the Past, we still get another version of Hyrule through time travel. We get to travel 7 years into the future. And this is where Ganondorf took over Hyrule. The atmosphere, especially in the castle town, is dark, and I love it. The dungeons here are also so good, as with any traditional Zelda game. Though the story here is just kinda there. It's nowhere near as good as Majora's Mask, but honestly, I'm fine with that. Just all in all, Ocarina of Time is a special game and it would set the foundations for future Zelda games to come. And it makes me kind of sad when people just see Ocarina of Time as archaic, like, no, it created a lot of things. But whatever. And if there's anything else I need to say, it's that one day I would love to see Ocarina of Time 3D be poured to the Nintendo Switch, or hell, even remade, though that's honestly not needed. When I first got the Nintendo Switch in Christmas of 2018, this was one of the very first games that I ever got to play, and one of the games I lost on a school trip to DC. Breath of the Wild is a legendary game and a legendary revival in a legendary franchise. It's crazy to me how much they changed here versus the originals, and how much it still felt like Zelda to me. While the gameplay has changed heavily, it felt like a reinvention of the original Legend of Zelda, but in the best way possible. And if you've been on the internet long enough, then you've seen the original tech demo. Breath of the Wild is a magical experience, with one of my favorite worlds in the series. Series. It's so big, but it also feels real. Finding the memories and, and finding what happened a hundred years ago is amazing. People may not like the story, but I like it. I like the foundations. And then there's the Great Plateau, like said by thousands, is a great tutorial area. I also got stuck trying to find the shrines, and I had to be helped by a six-year-old. And while I do like Tears of the Kingdom more for everything that it added to Breath of the Wild, this was a title to do more and have a bigger impact. And when I replayed Breath of the Wild in 2023, I loved it just as much as I loved it originally, and even more so. I got to re-experience everything, and yet, I still loved it. I still felt enjoyment in finding the shrines and going through the world again. And I should also mention that I did this all before playing through Tears of the Kingdom, and somehow I felt no burnout, and this improved my experience with Tears of the Kingdom. Twilight Princess and Spirit Tracks were some of the first games that I've ever played, and they were likely the reasons that I loved gaming, and why I got into Nintendo games. 
Twilight Princess to me is such a special game, and I ended up playing it years after I got it because I was so scared by the prison section. Yes, I know, I was a puss. But Twilight Princess was so good to the point where I beat it, and I would eventually replay it two times, and I'm a guy who never replays games. Twilight Princess is just that good to me, and I believe that it's the best of the classic formula with the best gameplay up to this point, and the best dungeons, and hell, one of my few complaints about Twilight Princess is that there's too many dungeons. The story is also really good for a Zelda title, with, with Midna being one of my favorite companions in both gameplay and writing wise. The world that you get to explore is just amazing, with the Twilight atmosphere just being wonderfully oppressive. Twilight Princess is such a special game, and I love it so much. While I've never played the remaster due to me, I don't know actually. I just want Twilight Princess to come to Switch so more people can play it. I'd go more in depth into why I love Twilight Princess, but at that point, I'd rather make a full on video, which I'll do one day when I get the chance to. And if you can, I would recommend playing Twilight Twilight Princess. You can get it for a pretty good price via the Wii version, or you could also emulate any other version. Before I played Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and before I played Tears of the Kingdom, this was my favorite game of all time. It's insanely special to me, and I hope you get to play it if you haven't already. I know you'll love it. <laughs> It should be really obvious that Tears of the Kingdom is my favorite game in the series, and possibly of all time. It took the base of what made Breath of the Wild so good, but massively improved on it with new features like Ultra Hand, Recall, Fuse, and so many more. It's obviously not as impactful as Breath of the Wild, but it doesn't need to be. The new layers, that being the depths in the skies, are so cool and provide new gameplay loops to Hyrule. And while I do wish that Nintendo updated the UI and put more new things to do in the new layers of Hyrule, I still love it. I love the combat changes and I love the Zonai, and there's also not much I can say here without repeating what I've already said before. So if you're interested to know more about what I truly think about Tears of the Kingdom, check out the compilation I posted just two weeks ago. Matthew is out of here! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.